Hey everyone, it's Matt here and welcome to another episode of Tutorial Level. And in this episode, I'm going to teach you how you can play PS1 games on your Android phone. Although specifically, the one that I will be using is the Samsung Galaxy S10. So, let's actually get to it right now. So the first thing you want to do is open up the Google Play Store and type in DuckStation. Yes, DuckStation. It is a fantastic emulator. I already have it downloaded. Obviously you won't, so please download it. I'm going to open it up right here and it's actually syncing up my games. If you're opening it up for the first time, it's going to ask you, hey, where do you want your games directory to be? That's just where all of your games are. You can choose anywhere, either on your phone or your micro SD card. I highly suggest putting it on your micro SD card. But either way, though, you can see all the games that I have here. And let's actually talk about some settings before getting into the game itself. I can't go through everything because we'll be here all day, but I will go through what's most important, and if you have any questions, please comment down below. So controller settings are very important to me because I have the GameSir X2, which is connected directly to my phone. Either you could have something like that, or you could have a Bluetooth controller connected to your phone. Point is, is that this is actually how you can configure the buttons so that you don't have to use the touchpad on your phone to play these games. There's a memory card editor as well, so if you want to, you could actually take some of your saves from your PC, from DuckStation, and put them on your phone, or even your Steam Deck. So it's really freaking cool, it's basically cross saves, but of course, you know, a bit more manual. So we're going to start Bloody Roy here, and not just because it is a fantastic game, a fantastic franchise that I do recommend checking out if you never have, but also because there are some settings that you can access while playing games, and it's really going to change how you play games, not just on your phone, but really anywhere you use DuckStation. So while playing, if you press the back button here, a whole new menu comes up. You can see load state, save state. You know how those work if you've used emulators before. You can actually toggle a fast forward option, which... I'm not really going to use, but hey, if you're playing some RPGs and you want to speed through some of the grinding, you can do that. What I care about is the gear up here. Also, by the way, the buttons are also for controllers as well. You can actually, you know, do that here as well. But the gear is what's very important to me. So if anything isn't working for you while playing your game, you can actually change some of the general settings and it might actually help performance. But I care about display. Now, I don't really care about aspect ratio or widescreen. I want to play these games the way they were originally meant to be played, at least when it comes to the aspect ratio. But if you go under enhancements, you can go to resolution scale and you can change how the game looks. And again, I do care about how the game was originally meant to be played when it comes to aspect ratio. But when it comes to the resolution, honestly, I'm going to put it to 1080p and I'm gonna have a real good time. Now you can also go to 4K. I don't really think it matters, especially if you're just trying to play on your phone. If you're trying to connect it to a larger television, which you can do with the Samsung Galaxy S10, then sure, maybe you do wanna boop, uh, boop, boost it up to 4K. But do remember though that your phone's gonna get hot, your phone's gonna run out of charge probably real quick. You don't wanna go too hard when it comes to the resolution, but personally, I love having it at 1080p. It looks amazing, especially on my phone, which also, by the way, something to remember is that, you know, if you have a display that's not really going to showcase how good something like 4K would look, there's no reason to really put it up to that. Like, there's just no reason whatsoever. But if you want to, it is available. Also, there are achievements as well that you can unlock while playing games. Personally, I don't really care about this, especially because I have to be online and connected with like a user-based account to actually get the achievements. But if you do care about that, I do think it's pretty cool. It's just not really something that I care too much about because sometimes I just want to play on the train or just in a car and I'm not going to have the Wi-Fi for it. And under advanced, there's some more settings that I really don't mess around with. But again, if you're playing your game and for some reason there's some issues, I would again suggest maybe taking it from 4K back to 1080p. But if it's not related to that, then I would suggest going under advanced and maybe toggling some settings and see if that fixes anything for you. I cannot believe how far we've come with technology. I remember when I was a kid playing the PS1 on my CRT. And here I am now being able to play it in 1080p or more on my phone. So let's get back to me in front of the shelf. So as you can see, it wasn't that difficult to set up and actually it's pretty damn fun. Like I know that, you know, I have a PS1 and I have a PS2 and I have a PS3 back there, okay? So I'm pretty good and I have a PSP and a PS Vita. So I'm 
pretty damn good when it comes to ways to play the PS1. But honestly, though, when it comes to how these games look, and when it comes to the fact that it's a you know a much more portable way to play it, when it comes to the PSP and the Vita, uh, you know you're really more so restricted, at least when it comes to uh, high you know high quality emulation to what was originally released on those platforms. I'm actually happy to have a ton of games available to me through my phone. So either way, though, thank you all so much for watching. If you like the video, please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, if you don't like the video, you can still like and subscribe either way. I won't judge you for it. So thank you all so much for watching. Love you all. Take care. And I hope you tune in next time. So I'll see you.